you guys, I'm Shekinah, founder of Purpose Joy, and I'm here with Gino Reeser with Be Well Be Ham, the city of Birmingham's wellness coordinator. And we are super duper excited to have you join us for our Shining Self Care segment. Today we'll be bringing you four tips for effective self care um, that we're hoping that will allow you to just relax, sit back, do some self reflection, and really make the best of the rest of your 2020. So, some of you guys might be asking the general question what is self care? Well, by definition, it's the process of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health. But um, our definition is all things taking care of you. Whatever you're doing, habits you're developing to make sure that you live the best and most authentic life that you can possibly live. Living your best life. Hey. I ain't going back and forth with you. <laughs> right, just like you know, said, live your best life. And so we're hoping that through these four perspectives, you'll be able to not only live your best life, but live your most authentic life, okay? All right, you guys, so our four perspectives for effective self-care are one, changing your perspective, two, taking care of your body, three, establishing a routine, and then four, practicing some sort of self-reflection, okay? Awesome, so when you talk about changing your perspective, let's kind of dive into that one a little bit more. Okay. I know you probably got some good thoughts, but my mind is just racing. Changing your perspective is that about your environment? Right. Is that about your family life? Right. Is that the perspective on the outlook on yourself? Right. Kind of, kind of touch on to that for our employees. Okay, okay. So we go on to our next slide. Um, it's going to basically talk about that. That's what our first and most foremost, most important thing when it comes to self-care is being aware of your perspective and changing your perspective. And it covers all those bases you talked about, you know. It's your mind. It's about how you feel about work. It's about how you feel about your family. It's about how you feel about yourself in general. Um, at the end of the day, you have to be very careful about what you're taking in right now. Um, everything from the news to your family members, friends, everybody is kind of feeding you some type of energy or some type of information. So when it comes down to your perspective, it's based off of those things. Uh, at the end of the day, your words, they trigger thoughts. Those thoughts, they trigger emotions, and those emotions will trigger your actions. So if you want to change the way your life is looking, what your day is looking like, how you're operating throughout your everyday life, you have to change your words, and that will help you change your perspective. That energy, that hype that you want to have about your day, start with something different for your day. Maybe an affirmation or a motivational um, speaker or something like that to kind of influence your day and influence how you feel about your day. And all of a sudden, it'll change your whole entire outlook. Nice. I like that. I like that. Um, I think one of the things that I do as far as changing my perspective is keeping a positive outlook regardless of what's yeah. going on around me. Yeah. So waking up in the morning, positive outlook, this is going to be a great day. I'm putting on my gear, my armor, I'm getting ready, and I'm already knowing that I'm going to go into this day conquering it, killing it, uh, you know, being the best that I can be. And that's just kind of how I start my day. I'm getting a mindful mode of making sure that day is going to be a hundred, a thousand percent, make sure I'm bad a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's kind of hard to have a bad day when you are concentrating on having a great day. Right, right. It's like kind of that thing where you, if you focus on the good, you'll see the good. If you focus on the bad, you'll see the bad. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about changing our perspective, okay? So on to number two. Slide number two. Slide number two. And that is taking care of your body. Uh, all of this, okay? You gotta make sure you're taking care of your body, all right? Whether we realize that, <laughs> if that can get you your woods, no shoes, okay? Whether we realize it or not, our body is directly affected with our mood and everything else, okay? Um, everything from the endorphins you get from working out to dopamine to everything, it helps you maintain your mood, stabilize your mood, and so you wanna make sure that you're allowing yourself the opportunity to really take care of your body. Taking care of your body can look like water, drinking water every day, it can look like exercising, um, the little stretch that you do in the morning, or even like a little dance party by having your friends, going to work out with the boys at the park. All those things are all great, great ways of for practicing effective physical self-care and taking care of your body. Now, we do want to make sure that we practice safety guidelines when we're doing these. Absolutely. So, you know, basketball, gyms with friends, and, you know, a lot of gyms are not open right now. Right. So, you may want to tailor your program with the self-care for your body to your place, maybe your backyard, right. um, your garage, right. there are different areas and different places. A workout can be done anywhere. And if you follow Be Well in the Morning on Instagram and Be Well Be Ham on Facebook, we have several short workouts that we've posted 
Every Wednesday, workout Wednesday. Check us plug. Check us plug. Workout Wednesday. Check us out on there, and we give you several opportunities to uh, dive into a little bit of a workout from mobility yeah. to strength training to cardiovascular condition. Right. So you know, check that out, and make sure that you're being safe throughout the whole time that you are engaging in any kind of group or semi-group activity. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know for um, a perfect example, um, Railroad Park has a lot of different spaces and guidelines where you can practice safe social distancing and still work out and still get, awesome. get what you need to get done. So, um, shout out Railroad Park. Right. Shout out Railroad Park. But the whole point, guys, is that taking care of your body is essential right now. Okay? It directly affects your mood, directly affects how you operate throughout the day. So make sure you take care of yourself and doing something to get your body moving and things like that and keeping yourself active. Okay? So let me get this straight. Yeah. You need to tell me, if I'm at home and I go to work all day and I come home and I just sit and I don't do anything else but just eat and go to sleep, Chances are I could wake up a little bit more cranky in the morning. Absolutely, and absolutely. Work. There's this thing called endorphins, and they're one more thing. It blows your mind. Don't say. Okay. Endorphins, yeah. Endorphins. And when you work out, when you do any type of physical, uh, physical activity, that hormone goes throughout the rest of your body and kind of stimulates you, gives you a little bit of energy, balances your mood, and has a bathing effect. And so what you want to do is do all that you can. There's so much that is out of our control right now. So you want to do all that you can with what you can control. And whether it's so instead of going home and sitting on the couch, doing some squats while you're watching your little show and things like that. Or even if you want to take the stairs at work as opposed to taking the elevator. Or um, just walking around um, a park or anything like that. Say, say social distancing, but just making sure you're moving your body to whatever capacity you can because the benefits, they're just, you can't, they're on that. Say, say that word again, endorphins. 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 You need that. You need that. You need that. All right. So that takes us to number three. Good old number three, and that is establishing a routine. Okay. So we talked about um, taking care of our body, and we talked about trying to change our perspective. We mentioned working out. We mentioned um, doing some type of mantra and things like that. All of that falls underneath the umbrella of establishing a routine. Now, me and my boys got a routine. And talking about, like, routine that we do when we be pulling up to a spot, you know, like, who you know, not, even, not that kind of That's routine. not even what bag we're in right now. We're like, in a whole other bag. No, 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 That's not even where we're at. Just, okay. <laughs> Get back. My bad. When we say establishing, I'm going to say, okay, when we say establishing a routine, we are talking about trying to get something or some type of regular activity or regular system that you operate under every day. Now, we know that things happen in life and that may be a little um, un- unrealistic for some of you that may have children, things like that, you know, kids can switch up your whole day. But what we want to think about is like just how you can maintain that routine as something that is non-negotiable. And when I say non-negotiable, I mean like that is a necessary thing for you to function properly, okay? We all have them. Whether it be you have to make sure that you listen to your good music in the morning or you have the opportunity to journal in the morning. You have your opportunity to read. Even if it's your morning job and you need to be in silence. Whatever it is, you have a routine. You have something that is dedicated specifically to you. So you want to make sure that going forward is you continue to establish that routine. The routine will allow you to develop habits and these habits will help you to maintain whatever goals you set for yourself. So don't let anybody get in the way of my routine. Exactly. So my, exactly. anybody or anything. Non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable. 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 If you need it, it's like you can't function without it. And so once you establish those non-negotiables, those boundaries, those healthy boundaries, being able to say no when it's time to say no, yes when it's time to say yes, you're rewarding yourself. You're allowing yourself to be encouraged to know that there's something that you set aside specifically for you. So that's what the routine is so, so important. So when I get ready to um, do my routine in the evening, and my wife need help with giving the kids a bath. I'm going to tell her, this is not the goal. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, no, 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 no. No, I can't that's do it. That's all we're doing. That's oh. You can, there's a difference between compromise and, a, and then you just oh. completely, completely pushing away what you're supposed to be doing. Now, compromise would be you doing what you got to do, and then you setting aside your time still after oh, the fact. so this is after the fact. Exactly, exactly. Make sure y'all catch this. Compromise. After the fact. After the fact. After the fact. We're not saying, we're not saying completely, all, completely separation from either one of those obligations. You do what you got to do for the fam, and then you do what you got to do for yourself. You can't take care of them properly unless you're taking care of yourself. So that's why it's so important as you establish that routine. Now, I do have a little quick parable that I love using. Mm-hmm. And you get this right on any airlines. Okay, they say you can't take care of somebody else. You can't save somebody else right. if you don't save yourself. Right, right, right. That's self-care. It is, it is self-care. self-care. It's the highest form of self-care. That's, that's At the end of the day, you 
are you're you're trying to make sure that you are your best self at all times. Because when you're your best self for yourself, you can be your best self for other people. Nice. Yeah. What you got next? All right. So number four, the last one. Of course, it's the last one. Right? The last one. Like, hey, we just we just got started. That's crazy. Wow. It's okay. It's okay. We'll okay. We'll 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 we did that. I'm bringing my back. All right. So number four, last but not least, is self reflection. This. Is like just just, self, just think about the word man and the word self reflection. It's one of those things that once you kind of really get in the habit of doing it, it can change your life forever. We have this thing that I like to call inventory, and it's taking inventory of yourself. What's inside? What are your good traits? What are your bad traits? What are things that you're really really proud of for yourself? And what are things that you may want to fix? You know, all that stuff comes with self reflection. Though you have to sit back and really allow yourself to either journal, do some type of drawing. Um, even if you uh, just meditate, read a book, or whatever the case, allow yourself the opportunity to look within yourself and figure out what's there. You won't know how amazing you are unless you take that time to really, really self-reflect. Now, that, Shekinah, I'm not going to lie. This is something I'm really good at. So, oh, I look in the mirror every day. <laughs> I mean, I get up, I see my reflection. And I got several mirrors. I'm, uh, I'm checking out my self-reflection uh -huh. every last one. I'm looking really good at me. Still, <laughs> Self, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 so, is that the kind of self reflection? Like, is, 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 it, is it meant to? Are you looking for your reflection or are you looking deeper, like Michael Jackson, man in the mirror type? Okay, hot key, hot key, super hot key, man super in the mirror type. Okay. Like, you okay. was, was tipping okay. on a little bit, but like, okay. to get, you at the first level. To get to like level five, yeah, 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 that's getting the man in the mirror aspect. And when we even think about that song, uh, Man in the Mirror, you're kind of like trying to see what it is that you could be, as far as like, what can you change to be better? How can, you, how can you grow to affect the people around you, to change and make sure that people are influenced around you and make sure that you're being your most authentic self and best self that you can be. And that's what self-reflection is all about. That's the so whole point of it. Can self-reflection uh, have or add a little bit of manifestation in that? Absolutely. Okay. Here's the big, big thing. Remember where I talked about you don't know what you've accomplished or anything like that until you self-reflect? The most amazing thing about self-reflection it's not just thinking about where you've been and what you can do, but it pushes you and how it gives you confidence to do something else, to push to the next thing. It's almost like once you graduated or whatever the case is, like, okay, boom, I graduated, I don't finish school, or like, what? I, oh, shoot, master should be easy. You see what I'm saying? Or if I, if you went ahead and you established a business, oh, well, the next business, writing a book, or whatever the case should be easy. When you take that time and take inventory of yourself, it makes everything else that comes after it a lot more easier because you got that confidence build up. You took inventory of your confidence. You took inventory of knowing what you can actually do. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Self-reflection. I'm going to do that a lot, a lot better. Not just visual. It's got to be within. Okay, so how about this? I got something for you. You got something for you. I, I, love, I love gifts. I, got something I love gifts. And actually, if you um, weren't able to pick up one of your kids, you have this as well. So inside your kit that you got from us, um, you would have a, a self-care checklist. So you got that. We provided that for you. Um, you also have an affirmation card as well, okay? And then what we have is materials for our self-reflection activity, which is called the Rosebush activity, okay? And so we're going to go over some instructions for that, okay, you guys? All right. So here you go, Gino. Let me yeah, get it. Okay. All right. Okay. Got my blank sheet. You got your blank sheet. We have crayons here, but you may have colored pencils or something like that. If you didn't get a chance to get a kit, um, honestly, any blank sheet of paper and some type of any type of material you can write or draw with is perfectly fine. That's all you really need. This ain't no cheap paper either. And I know this is a good paper. It's shiny, nice and shiny. It's sweet. You ready? Every time, every time. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go and read through a prompt. Okay, and close your eyes. And once we complete this prompt, you go ahead and you'll do what the prompt says. All right. And from that prompt, we'll have some processing questions. And those processing questions will allow us to really, really self-reflect, dig deep, deep, and kind of get some new understanding about who we are, what we can do, and what we can accomplish. All right. So let's get started. That's the kind I can't uh, write and close my eyes at the same time. No, no, I'm not going to listen to the instructions because I ain't starting the instructions yet. You all jumping the gun and we're not going to calm down. You're going to calm down. You're going to calm down. You're going to calm down. Hey. <laughs> okay. So um, basically, again, and listen to the prompt, um, and you'll, you'll practice in the Royals mission, and then once that's completed, I'll give you some more instructions about how to enter in a raffle that Purpose Royal will be having, okay? All right. I love raffles. Don't we all. Don't we all. Love giveaways. Love giveaways. All right. So 
Everyone, what I want you to do is close your eyes and relax, okay? Close your eyes, relax, and just breathe in and out. Allow yourself to just kind of release the day and focus strictly on where you are right now. So I want you to close your eyes and imagine that you are a rosebush. What kind of rosebush are you? Are you small? Are you large? Are you fat? Are you tall? Do you have flowers? If so, what kind? They don't necessarily have to be roses. Remember, this is a representation of you. What color are your flowers? Are there many or just a few? Are you in full bloom or do you only have buds? Do you have leaves? What kind? What are your stems and branches like? What are your roots like? Or maybe you don't have any roots. If you do, are they long and straight? Or are they twisted? Are they deep? Or do they have thorns? Where are you? Are you in a yard or a park? In the desert? In a city? Maybe you're in the country? In the middle of an ocean? What's around you? Are there other flowers or are you alone? Are there trees? People? Birds? Do you look like a rosebush or something else? Is there anything around you like a fence? If so, what is it like? Does anyone take care of you? Open your eyes and draw your rosebush. Okay, you're good? Yep. All right, cool. And those of you, if you need to take some more time, that's perfectly okay. Um, the processing questions that I'm about to go over with, Mr. Gina here will be able to put those inside you. Those will be in your kit as well, so you should definitely be able to see those questions and process them accordingly, okay? All right. So, here we go. Mr. Gino, how did you feel about the activity? The rope, the activity to me was uh, very calm and very... Um, very retrospective mm -hmm. for me because I've never been challenged to, you know, think of myself as a rose bush yeah. or some sort of uh, uh, another object, yeah. human, I mean, yeah. basically. Um, so, you know, to understand uh, what a rose bush or what plant life or trees and things do for the environment, for other people, that kind of uh, put in perspective kind of my purpose and mm. what I like to do as far as helping people achieve their best um, physical, mental, emotional, social form of wellness. Yeah. For, uh, what I serve as here at the city of Birmingham. So I drew a rose bush slash tree. Yeah. Because I think the, you know, trees provide oxygen. Yeah. They provide life uh, for, uh, you know, birds and different people live in them. They can, leaves and different things uh, serve as compost to fertilize yeah. um, the roots. Uh, help that tree to live and as well as uh, hold water for that tree. So my purpose that I serve as the wellness coordinator, my job is to provide uh, th these wellness opportunities for our employees. So a tree is normally an immovable object that's mm -hmm. cut down or uprooted. So I got a, um, let, let, me, let me see if you can interpret it. No, see, this is, this, is, this is your thing, though. This is your game. Oh, my thing? Oh, okay. You, 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 we're going to go through these questions, and you're going to break down for me. That's oh, how this one. Yeah, yeah. So, so, 
So that's I don't want. It's, it's strictly the beautiful thing about this activity is that there's no right or wrong. Okay. There's no answer or anything like that to any of it. All of it is all whatever society is being put on that paper. Um, it's used a lot of times in situations where you might have people who might not be able to express themselves as well verbally, um, especially children, things like that. Um, it allows you the opportunity to get whatever is inside your brain out without having to use words. So that's what this is all about. Okay. Um, so you kind of did, did um, express, you know, what feelings came up for you and things like that. Was there anything you found difficult about drawing it? Um, <laughs> the difficult part was you said rose bush, and I'm like, not that artistic. <laughs> right, right. So, but I did right. add thorns. Yeah, yeah. So I did add some thorns yeah. because uh, rose bushes protect themselves mm -hmm. by thorns from predatory things and different bugs and things that may harm the roses. The same way I want to protect my employees yeah. from uh, people that may not have their best interests at heart when it comes to their emotional, social, mental, physical, and financial Absolutely. wellness. Absolutely. That's really good. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, you did express that. So, how does this drawing represent your life currently as a whole? You kind of touched on it, but go, if you want to just elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, um, I think, you know, the drawing of the rose bush, like I said, it kind of, uh, it, it serves a purpose of putting, like I said, retrospectively, I'm thinking about my role that I serve in uh, with the city of Birmingham and, you know, helping, uh, my employees achieve wellness on all those levels, mental, yeah. emotional, social, financial, and spiritual. Right. And the rose bush represents, you know, roses are pretty, there's something that you want to get and go to and you want to pick them, but they do have thorns. Right. And they, they sometimes are hard to um, manicure or keep, they have to be manicured and right. kept up. You can't just let them grow. Right, you can't just let them go all the way. Let them go right. crazy, they can be a <laughs> small, they can be right. too much, yeah. They can yeah. too much, right. right. And so that's kind of how, um, you know, wellness is a, one of those things where it's ever growing, it's ever right. evolving. Um, they got some thorns in certain right. areas, you may right. run into a thorn, but the flower that comes from it, which is each employee, once they understand and are able to tap into the resources that we want to provide, I feel like it produces a rose. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. That's really good. Really, really good. Okay, so last but not least, we got some closing questions for you, Mr. Daniel, because you really, we got like a whole little, little book that you kind of just, you know what I'm saying, you, you covered it all. You just what can I say? Throw it up. So, <laughs> right, absolutely. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Absolutely. So, my last question for you okay. is going to be what did you take away? from this activity? Like, what is it that you think you'll be able to take away from it? What did you learn from it? Um, I learned how to form a deeper, uh, a deeper uh, respect uh, for myself as far as when you're talking about being mindful and manifesting the things that you want to do in the day. Because I, I am a, you know, just like all of us, I'm go, go, go. I got three small kids, mm -hmm. wife, career, yeah. you know what I'm saying, side stuff going on, uh, so uh, it, what it took for me was, what I took from it was slow down a little bit, think about what you're doing, manifest it, visualize it, and then go out and make it happen, and sometimes I can get a little ahead of myself by, I'm, trying, I'm wearing many hats, I'm doing a lot, and so I forget to take the time to smell the roses, no pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> to smell the roses, and you know, take the time to to do the things correct, like slow down and understand what it is that I need to be doing. To, that way, I'm, I'm going to be able to manifest it, uh, manifest that that whatever's coming out of it. It, was, it should be able to manifest more purely and right. better. Right. Versus if you're going through it and you just you're not thinking about it, you're, right. you're taking it for granted. Right. I, I took a, this this. That's what I want to get to. I take a lot for granted. Yeah. A lot of uh, the time. Family time to work. I take I've been taking it for granted, and now I'm going to uh, take the time to manifest some of these things that I wanted to do, and go through them. The you know with with a little bit more uh, ideology on how to actually do it. Yeah, I love it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, you guys. Is that the end? I'm just really. I, I never get to those there. Oh, I mean, I'm so sorry. But that's, that's, that concludes that concludes our session today. Um, if you guys want to follow us or anything like that, get some more information. The information's up here on Purpose Door on Instagram. 
Purposeful on Facebook, purposeful.org is the website. We have some self-care checklists on there, some blog, some blog information, um, different posts and things like that. So kind of add some inspiration to your day. Um, also, if you want to send in your world special activity that you drew, um, it, it, or if you want to participate in that way, so Purpose Joy, you can submit it to the Purpose Joy Instagram page. Um, we'll post it on our site, and then you'll be entered into a raffle for a self-care giveaway that we think that you would really, you know, enjoy. Now, so kind of, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Uh -huh. When I first came here, uh -huh. I saw some of the stuff, and you know, the self care things I've seen. You know, I saw this table. I was like, man, I'm finna be karate chop the table. <laughs> I'm finna be breaking stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I built up stuff that I need to get out, and I thought, you know, self care was like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, this room look a little nice to be breaking stuff. Out. <laughs> so you know, is there uh, some avenues for our people that? You know, the guys that get that do have some aggression, I know we want to work out right. and things like that. And, you know, the, the drone was good. Oh, yeah, drone, right, right, good. right. But I still got that. The anger. Yeah. Okay, so honestly, to be 100, does this thing cost mass therapy, right? Mass therapy. Mass therapy. It's a, oh. it's a bag. 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 So what you do is whatever you have issues with and things like that or whatever, you can write it on a plate. You can write it on a mirror. You can write it on anything that's breakable, basically. And you get yourself in the space, in the same space and things like that. You can write it. If you want to, um, like, let's say there's that you're having or something that you're doing. Maybe you just had a really rough day. Um, you can write that issue on that plate and you can break the plate. Um, okay. It's a really good, it's another self-reflection activity, it's another um, de-stressing activity and things like that allow you the opportunity to kind of get some of that angst out without harming yourself or anyone else or anything like, like that and allowing you the opportunity to just kind of um, practice another activity of self-care independent. Um, whenever you get ready, it's a, go to a park, go to a parking lot, or whatever it is, break plates, have your field day, boom. Gotcha. That answers it. everything perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time. Of course. And I really of course. That we can look forward to hearing from you again. Yeah. With yeah, Be Well in the mornings. Um, so, y'all stay tuned with Be Well, Be Him, and Be Well in the mornings on Instagram. We're going to have some mindful motivation, some one minute self care. Self care minute. Self care minute. Self care minute. It just happened right here. <laughs> self care minute with Mr. Connolly. Mr. Connolly. Oh, hey, hey. Self care minute. <laughs> 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 self care minute. So we'll see y'all next time. Signing out. Be well in the mornings. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.